In the sanctuary, you can do that wherever you are. Amen. So why don't you make your bedroom a bedroom cathedral? Make your living room a sanctuary. Let's go to the Lord, and he'll send help from the sanctuary. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. To those who are here in the sanctuary, those who are listening online, thank God for each of you and for you being in worship this morning. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 I'll bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Glory to God in the highest. Peace and on earth, goodwill to men. Is anybody coming to worship him today? On this third Sunday in Advent, let's give God our best praise. If you don't mind, find the words there in the bulletin if you don't know them, and let's worship. Come let us adore him.
just go off the page. In him there's only victory. says let everything that had breath praise the Lord praise the Lord everybody
Amen. Let's just praise him. Amen. I know we might have somebody ask, well, why are you praising him? Well, let's look at it. Been good to us. Saved us. Sought us. Continues to intercede on our behalf. He is a friend to us. Oh, that's just a little minute list of why we should praise him. Amen. I, I, I believe that's what we came to do. By listening to the choir, the sanctuary choir singing, just looking out amongst you. I believe we got some praises in here to in this house today. Let's give God some more praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sanctuary Choir. Let's just praise the Lord. Forget about everything else. Amen. Just praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. What a glorious day it is. Amen. Amen. Let us go to the Lord for a word of prayer. Amen. Almost kind and wonderful and gracious Father which art in heaven, Lord, we just come as humbly as we know how before your throne of grace, before your throne of glory, praising you this morning, worshiping you, lifting you up as our God. As our heavenly father, yes, as our friend and our salvation, you have become our salvation. Thank you, Father, for all your bountiful blessings you bestow upon us each and every day. Blessings seen and blessings unseen. Whether we see them or not, you're blessing us. And we thank you for it. For you're that kind of God. That you love us so much that you gave your only begotten son. Even when we were yet sinners, your word says Jesus died on the cross for us. Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to gather here today in your sanctuary. And thank you for being in our presence. Coming to commune and unite with us in this praise and worship experience this morning. We pray that you touch every heart, mind, and soul. That they will continue to lift up your beautiful, wonderful name and give praise and worship unto you. For you and you alone are worthy. Bless all those that are even in the virtual sanctuary as they praise and worship along with us. Thank you, Father, and continue to lead and guide us. Bless the man of God that's going to bring the word, a refreshing word from you this day. Lift him up, strengthen him, encourage him. Do whatever needs to be done to let that word you've placed in him go forth and not return unto you void, but prosper in the thing which you send it to. Have your way this morning, and we will give you all the honor, glory, and the praise. Thank you in advance for what we are, we are going to continue to experience. These blessings and more we ask in the precious, mighty, omnipotent, holy name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. And for his sakes, we say amen. 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 Our scripture text this morning will come to us from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. Those of you who brought your swords and would like to follow along, will come to us from the prophet Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. And the word of the Lord reads as such. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be as such was in her vexation when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon and the land of Nephetili, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increase the joy. They, they joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For though thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the war warrior is which 
confused with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. Look at the ending. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. May God add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his holy word. Amen.
choir, now is the time to worship the Lord. And they said glory. But I'm so thankful every now and then, I have to holler and say, oh, glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise in this house. For he is worthy. Hallelujah. I'm trying to contain myself. I stood this morning to give us our prayer concerns for this week. Our prayer concerns this week for our sick and our shut-in, they are Brother Frank Rich, Sister May Sue Clay, Minister Timothy Jamar, Sister Betty Cook, Minister Johnny Cook, Mother Lily Walker, Brother Charles Hyder, Sister Jeanette Radford, Sister Hassie King, Sister Cheryl Ford, Sister Carol Vasquez Hinton, Deacon Carver, and Minister Maddie Williams. Tavis Harris, who will be having a procedure this week. Sister Linda Rayford, Sister Joyce Mitchell, Sister Favis Fuquay, Sister Vanessa Hearn, who's with us in the sanctuary this morning, praise the Lord. Dr. William Clark, Sister Lily Friend, Brother Norell Burnett, Sister Pamela McDonald, Sister Latonya Kelly, Minister Peyton Sims, Sister Edna Rich, who is home recuperating, and Sister Carmen Vance. These are the prayer concerns this week for our known sick and shut in. The prayer concern this week for our relatives and friends, and they are Mrs. Martha Woodard, Deacon Virgil Gillen, Odell Erskine, Stacy Bland, Pastor James Battle, who's in Georgia, Danny Harris. And we want to ask special prayer this morning for our sister, Vel Velvet Holden. Uh, she's already had two surgeries this week and is facing a third surgery. Amen. Those are the prayer concerns this week for our relatives and our friends. Our prayer concerns this week for our bereaved, and they are. Pray for Calvin Spivey and family in the passing of his brother, Mr. Donald Spivey. Pray for the Greer family in the passing of Valerie Greer, which is the cousin of Sister Glenda McLaurin. Pray for Sister Diane Heider and her family in the passing of her husband, Mr. Eddie Heiter. Pray for the Fletcher, Bibbs, Holly, and Ayers families in the passing of Mrs. Estella Fletcher, the sister-in-law of Minister Kelly Ayers. Pray for the Robinson and Garner families in the passing of Mr. Emmanuel Robinson, who is the cousin of Sister Earlene Garner. And pray for the Leslie, Park, Harris, and Vance families in the passing of their cousin, Mr. Harold Leslie. We have so much to pray for. And let me add this morning to pray for all of those unknown and unspoken prayer requests as well. Deacon Leslie Carter will come and lead us in this intercessory prayer time. And as he comes to lead us, the Bible has admonished every one of us to pray without ceasing. Amen. So let us pray with him as he comes. morning saints indulge me for just a moment for those of you that are in the sanctuary with us and those that are watching my spirit asks me to ask you to whisper your prayer concerns to whisper right here and right now those issues and problems that you're having right now because I as a human being don't know them all so take a moment right now just to whisper verbally whisper your prayer concern now as I pray pray along with me father before we even start telling you our issues, our concerns, our problems, and our pains, we first want to acknowledge you as God. God all by yourself, and you're worthy of all the praise and all the accolades that we can put upon you. 
For Lord, we know that you are the creator. You are the sustainer. You're God. And we know that you love us. And Lord, we want you to know that we love you. At this time, this very moment, God, we, we come to you as your servants, knowing that as we pray and as we request, that you're already aware. You already know what we're feeling and what we're going through. So, Lord, we really ask that you touch us and allow us to feel your spirit. Lord, we're weak. Personally, Lord, I'm in pain. But God, I know that just one touch from you. And we're asking you, oh God, to sweep over our souls, touch our aching bodies, soothe our troubling minds, rock us in your arms, oh God. Assure us that you're there, you're here, and you're everywhere. More than able, more than willing to create and to do miracles in our lives. Father, we're living in some perilous times. But I know that you are aware of that already, so I'm not going to cry and moan as if all is lost, and there is no hope. For God, you are fully aware, and everything works under your auspices, and you know what you're doing, and allow us to just trust in you. As we go through the sorrow of death, you're with us. As we go through the aging process of these bodies decaying and falling down, you are there. When we're faced with those financial difficulties, oh God, you're there. When we're dealing with the, the leadership of the world and of this nation and all of the crooked and evil thoughts that go on, uh, even we're on, not even aware of. You're there. You say you raise them up. And you set them down. So Lord we just ask that. That that we have little faith in. Increase our faith. The things that we're wrestling with. And won't let go of. Reassure us oh Lord. That we're in your hands. Able us to trust you. Able us to just stretch out on your word so that we can continue to be kingdom builders for you. Christ followers. For Lord, we know that you're the true way. You're the only way. Help us to walk in it, to talk in it, to live in your ways. Father, bless Pastor Sykes. Touch him. Not only him, Lord. There are those that are among us watching. And in this building right now, we're going through some things, oh God. But reassure us. Touch us. Able us to realize that we're in your hands. And there's safety in your arms. To trust you for the outcome. And you will get the glory. So right now Lord I praise your holy name. I say hallelujah. For there is no God like you but you. And all of our circumstances. And all of our situations that we're dealing with. You're more than able. So we trust you right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
amen, amen. If you don't mind, give the Lord some more praise in your own way as we rejoice. Thank the Lord. Of course, I've heard. Yes, he has. I've heard the choir sing that a number of times, but just about every time they sing it, it makes me think about my friend Wayne Snodgrass. That was one of his, his favorites, his leading, but uh, God is good. We worship the Lord who has first place in this sanctuary. Thank the Lord for the ministers of the gospel in the pulpit and in the pew. Thank God for Again, for the choir, our sanctuary choir. And I mentioned this morning, I mentioned again that uh, uh, just about since pandemic, I haven't seen Mary Ann too many times. Uh, she's in the choir stand this morning. She's a, one of our senior saints. Uh, now she may not look like it, but she is a senior saint. I want y'all to know that. And it's good to see her back in the choir this morning. And good to see everybody. Thank God for you, our deacons, and um, thank the Lord for our ushers serving, and our nurse back there, and sound technicians. Some of them, some of them put in double duties. Uh, Deacon uh, Leon and and uh, uh, some of the others are pulling double d duties here at both services. Good for us to be here. Amen. In the presence of the Lord. This is its sanctuary, and the Lord is worthy to be praised. He promises to meet us in the sanctuary. And I believe his word has been fulfilled this morning, as I do believe the Lord has met us here this morning, as we rejoice and as we praise his holy name. To all those who are listening online, thank God for you. And uh, now you, you don't have to feel left out because... Wherever you are, in your car, in your office, in your home, you can convert that into a sanctuary by worshiping along with us this morning. And the Lord will come to where you are as well in, in that special way. Amen. Thank the Lord. Our uh, scripture text this morning, and you can be looking it up. You go back to Proverbs chapter 27, verse 1. And also a verse in chapter 28. As you are turning there, and so I won't forget it at the end of the service by way of announcements, of course you have received information that uh, Brother Eddie Heiter, Heiter Jr. service will be here in the morning at 11 o'clock. And our prayers go out to Diane and for the Heiter family. And we want to do all that we can do to help facilitate services on tomorrow morning. Please keep that in mind. And for those who, who do what you do from time to time, thank, thank God for you as well. Eddie was in our 8 o'clock service last Sunday, just like he, they are most Sundays. They come to 8 o'clock service, sitting right back there by where Willie Crutcher is sitting. And who knows the next day he was going to be with the Lord. And, uh, and he's told us about Velvet Holden. She also comes to the 8 o'clock service all the time. She was here last Sunday as well. And uh, a day or two after the services on Sunday, she was rushed to the hospital. She's had two surgeries, uh, emergency surgeries, facing another one in the hospital this morning. Uh, we talked last Sunday. You don't know what the next day will bring. So in here this morning, since we don't know what the next day will bring, let me tell each of you that I love you. And I want you all to tell around the building. Signal and whisper and, and let somebody know you love them and glad to see them. I want to uh, say congratulations to Brother Joshua Baker. Uh, he graduated this week with a master's Amen. in physical education. Amen. Amen. 
from down in Livingston. Uh, thank God for him. And I wanted to say a word also about uh, Sister Glenda McLaurin, one of our deaconesses, uh, who's going to be graduate, not graduating, but retiring. Yes, she kind of, I guess it kind of graduates, but <laughs> she is retiring. Her official day is on uh, December the 31st. And she has, they have a retirement celebration ceremony for her on tomorrow morning uh, on the arsenal, uh, Glenda McLaurin. So uh, you might want to extend your congratulations to her as well. Uh, I would say to her, as I said to others, when you are blessed to retire, uh, that's a blessing. And then I'm seeing all these young folk retiring. And they ain't old and decrepit yet. That means they can still enjoy. Amen. Do a, a few things. Amen. Take a few trips and, and just enjoy what you worked for. Amen. And when, when the Lord allows you to do that, you're blessed. Is that right, Sabrina? All right. <laughs> Amen. Proverbs chapter 27, verse <clears throat> 28. And as a pastor, there are some messages that I don't preach by choice. I preach because I'm uh, led and persuaded to preach it and some, sometimes to continue what we're preaching. And uh, it's a continuation this morning, and if the Lord is willing and gives us another week. I have more to say on this subject the next time. And I will say it until the Lord gets through. I, I put that under the uh, category of preaching the whole counsel of God. So you do know that the gospel is more than about just prosperity and uh, miracle healing instantly and all the stuff people be preaching. The gospel is more than that. Amen. We got to preach from the whole council. And from time to time, especially pastors and others too, God leads you to different messages at different times that he said his word don't return unto him void. There's a reason whether they're for one person or for many people. Whether they're for you here in the sanctuary, for those listening on the uh, computer, uh, God sends his word for a reason. So someone listening last week, let me clear up something before I read uh, this text for today. I said I would wait till we get online to, uh, uh, to add clarity. In one of the points last week, I mentioned uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Uh, uh, it says, remember your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come. And I further made the point that Sometimes we give the world and Satan all of our strength while we're young and uh, all that energy while we're young. Then sometimes we wait till we get old and, as I said, decrepit. Then we come to the Lord and want to give him what we got left. We don't have much left. Amen. So the person said to me that uh, it sounds like I was saying that God had no use for uh, and older folk didn't have any service to give to the Lord. That's not what I meant at all. I meant what the word says. Uh, sometimes it's, I heard somebody say, well, old age sometimes it's mighty inconvenient. Amen. You don't, here's the point. You just don't feel like you used to feel. And you just can't do what you used to do like you used to do it. Amen. And that's what. Uh, the writer is calling evil days. They coming. Your steps going to get shorter most of the time. Your eyesight get dim. And you, you whether it's rheumatism or arthritis, you got something. I heard Leslie talking this morning about he was in pain. Uh, most of us, time we get old, we got something going on in us that just don't allow us to do like we used to. That's why the Bible said, remember your creator while you're young, while you have your strength. Before the evil days come. So that's what I was saying. Amen. And thank God that he saves old people. He uses old people. Amen. 
for, for a whole lot. They are still gifted, and he's still calling and welcoming even the aged people. I wasn't saying at all that God doesn't do that. Amen. I have uh, gone on uh, several times and people laying on their deathbed called for me to come, come and lead people on their deathbed to the Lord. And some of those persons died within hours. God saves even on your deathbed. Amen. And so just wanted to give a little clarity to that and hope you can understand what the word says. Here is Proverbs chapter 27, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. Read this first verse of chapter 27 last week. I want to read it again. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And our text verse for today, chapter 28, verse 13, and I'll deal with this this week, and if the Lord is willing, next week as well. Listen to what the wisdom writer says. He that covers his sins, he that covers his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. And there's a lot of wisdom in that. Teaches us don't cover your sin, but it teaches us to confess them and to forsake them. Teaches us about repentance. And I want to talk, connecting this to last week, uh, I want to talk about the urgency of repentance. The urgency of repentance. And will you bow with me for a moment? Thank you, Lord, for this day. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O oh Lord my strength and my redeemer be pleased with what's said today give me a mind to think like you a heart to feel like you and a mouth to speak what you would speak in Jesus' name we pray amen amen the urgency of repentance and if you hear me say some things that I said last time again, I said it because I mean to say it again. Amen. Amen. You might well remember that on last week, we talked about procrastination. Hugh Blair said, and I reminded us last week, procrastination has been the ruin of mankind throughout every age. Procrastination is simply the putting off of something until a later time, or it is to delay. Many of the misfortunes which come upon men in their worldly concerns are consequences of procrastination. We bring some things on ourselves because of procrastination. While this can be detrimental in our natural life, the greatest evil of procrastination leads to the, is that of the postponement of the religious life. We put it off. The postponement of the Christian life and of our relationship with the Lord. We put it off and postpone it until some day or some time in the future. And I need to remind us again that that day or time that we anticipate in the future may not come to us. Some people say by and by when other matters are not so pressing and not so urgent, then they will find a convenient season to have a right relationship with God. They are relying upon the possibility 
that tomorrow may be extended to them. I need to tell you, tomorrow may not be extended to any of us. But people say, and I'm careful to repeat it again today, and I ain't scared. Amen. People say that I'll shake off those bad habits tomorrow. I'll curb those corrupt passions tomorrow. I'll give God my life tomorrow. I'll straighten up tomorrow. I'll sacrifice tomorrow. I will continue uh, with my regular life until I feel it's time to give my life to God, and I'll do that tomorrow. Amen. And I'll put out my time, put out my efforts to some causes larger than myself on tomorrow. I'll start cultivating Christian graces tomorrow. I'll go back to church tomorrow. I'll draw closer to God tomorrow. And here's my focus today. I'll repent of my sins tomorrow. Any of those, reso any of those resolves is procrastination. And we need to remember that procrastination can have devastating and even damnable consequences. Amen. You could miss out on your opportunity to do right, to do godly, to do what you should do. You can miss out on the opportunity by doing it today, uh, the opportunity of doing it today by putting it off for tomorrow. Tomorrow may never be mine. Uh, I, oh, I'm sorry. I can hear that down in my heart. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. I hear that other thing ringing. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. Give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. So for my sake, teach me to take one day. And on that one day at a time, do what you need to do. Amen. Help me preach again and tell somebody, if there's something you need to do, if there's something you should do, do it now. Do it today. Amen. When I left off last week, I said that we would begin this week where I left off talking about, uh, talking about repentance. On last week, I talked about the folly and danger of boasting on tomorrow. This week, the subject is the necessity and urgency, the necessity and urgency of repenting today. Uh, it's, when you talk about repentance, brother uh, and sisters, it's an urgent matter. Amen. And I would say to us in here, Christian, most of you I'm looking at, I believe you're Christians. And uh, most of us who know the Lord, who have a walk with him. It becomes sometimes necessary in our lives. We need to repent. And if it becomes necessary in our lives, we need to repent, then we don't need to put it off for tomorrow. We need to do it today. And then folk who haven't come to the Lord, who haven't confessed Jesus Christ, they need to repent of their sinful ways, come to the Lord. You don't need to put that off. You need to do it today. The necessity and urgency of repenting today. In capsule form, repentance is, and please make note of this, and if you miss it, I'll be coming across it again next week. But re repentance has some elements that's got to be in it before it is true repentance. In, in capsule form, repentance is, I want you to know this, number one, acknowledging your sins. 
And repentance is being, number two, sorry for your sins. Thirdly, repenting is uh, confessing your sins. Fourth, it includes asking God to forgive you of your sins. And wait a minute, but we ain't over yet. It ought to include that other element, uh, turning away from your sins. True repentance contains all of those elements. All of those elements are necessary before it can be said that you truly repented. You got to acknowledge, you got to call sin what God called it, sin. Acknowledge your sins. Be sorry for your sins. Confess your sins. Ask God to forgive you of your sins and then turn away from your sins. Now, I tell you, you take a little more time in the 11 o'clock service. You've heard me say this before. Some of you have. You might not remember it, but it might come to your remembrance. I remember when I was a teenager, I remember Grover and uh, Jenny uh, 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 Richards. And uh, they're Grover and, Grover and Jenny Richards now. They wasn't Grover and Jenny Richards when I first met them. Uh, Jenny, Jenny Fenster. But she came to church, Miss Crutcher, a few weeks, and she got saved. And uh, she was the one I told you about when she came back to church. She had a red big bow like this that she brought to church. And Elder Rogers preached one Sunday about adultery and shacking. Jenny went back home and told Grover, I want to be saved. We can't continue to shack up. You, you either got to marry or get out. She heard that word, and she acted on that word. Well, I brought that up because a lot of us, we hear words, and we don't act on it. And I still remember and still admire Jenny to this day. And that's been 40 some years, maybe longer, uh, uh, since I saw her do that. Uh, she went back and told Grover, we just ain't been living right. We've been shacking up. I want to be right. We got to get married or you got to move out. <laughs> That's where it ought to be because repentance, it includes a turning away from your sin. It's not, not, it's not good enough just to be sorry. It's not even good enough to acknowledge it. It's not good enough to ask forgiveness and you don't mean it, but you got to turn away you got to have that in your mind, that in your heart. Lord, forgive me. I'll turn away. Oh, yeah, all right, y'all don't want to hear me. Amen. I, I turn away from my sins. Got to include, repentance has to include all of those elements. Amen. The necessity and urgency of repentance and doing that today. Amen. I'll talk a little bit more about that next week. Y'all ain't through with me yet, and I'm not through with y'all yet on that. Amen. Someone has said that it is not the doctrine of repentance that man shuns and fails to acknowledge. It's not the doctrine that they shun, but it's the time for doing it. Most times people accept that they need to repent but they don't accept that they need to do it now and today. They're guilty of putting it off for a future time. They say tomorrow will be time enough. And they say this again and again and again. Throughout all the stages of their lives, they keep putting it off and putting it off. And while you're looking at me, I think some of us have done that. If we're not doing it now, we have done that in times past. But aren't you glad God brought us to where we are now? Yes, sir. Amen. Somebody looking at me today, listening to me today, whether it's in here, or listening on stream, somebody in here right now, if you think hard enough, you'll be glad that God didn't take you out of here Amen. in your younger years. Amen. Ah, a few years ago. Before, 
before he helped you to get some things straight. Some of us were messed up. We used to say that well, right now ain't the time and do it tomorrow, but aren't you glad by grace? By his grace, God taught you some sense. Amen. The Holy Spirit says today, but men say tomorrow. The Holy Spirit says right now, but men say later. Men do not see that they need to be saved now, but true religion is a matter of urgency. True repentance is also a matter of urgency. You need it now. If you have sin against God, you need to repent now. You need to repent today. The Bible doesn't talk about any such thing as future repentance. You never read where God told anybody to repent tomorrow. Repent is always in the present tense, meaning repent now, repent today. Amen. Somewhere we fix it in our minds, and here I go again. I got to confess again, uh, uh, when I was younger, uh, teenager, I guess pre-young uh, adult, somewhere in there, uh, I got to go to teenager because I, I, uh, God saved me and got me, drew me closer when I got to be a young adult. <laughs> But when I used to be a teenager, uh, I, used to, I used to be in the other crowd that used to plan to sin. Oh, on the weekend. Right. And I was going to church, I was learning and hearing the word. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was here to, going to church, hearing the word call myself saved, singing in the choir, but I was still playing the sin. And one of the things I used to say when I would plan the sin is, I, if I go ahead and do it, God, you're going to forgive me. I, repent, I can repent. Juicy. God's going to give me. I, I, I'll repent. Are you listening to me? Anybody ever ever done some foolishness like that? You knew what you wanted to do was wrong, but you went ahead and did it anyway because you had in your heart, God going to forgive me because I'm going to repent. I submit to it, if we start out like that, that ain't true repentance. You, 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 you planning on messing up, going to mess up, depending on God forgiving you, and, and when you repent, something is wrong with that picture. Repent is always in the present tense, meaning to repent now, repent today. There's no ground for hoping that a late repentance or a later repentance will be available to you, especially when you knowingly and willfully keep putting it off, especially when you do as I did. You make plans to mess up, because God promises he's going to help you to get up. For those of you who say, I'll repent when I get older. Who told you you was going to get older? For those of you who say, I'll repent when I get on my deathbed. Pastor, I heard you talking a few minutes ago about you led folks to Christ on the deathbed. Well, who told you you was going to get on your deathbed? And if you do get on your deathbed, who told you you're going to know it? Some folk are on the deathbed and they don't know they're in the world. You hear on the news this week about the young lady who's been in the coma a year and uh, passed away this past week. Didn't even know she was in the world. Who knows what kind of shape, what kind of condition you'll be in? Who knows what your tomorrow will hold? Help me preach and tell somebody repentance is urgent. If you need to repent, 
Come on, stay with me. If you need to repent, you ought to do it today. As life is uncertain, so is the continuance of God's grace uncertain. I know when I got deep Bible folk, I have to have to explain that a little bit, but uh, the continuance of God's grace is uncertain also. We don't know how long God's going to stretch forth his hands unto us. Isaiah 55, 6, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. You know what that suggests to you? It might come a day when you can't find him. And it might come a day when you don't consider him to be near. So seek him while you can find him. Call on him while he's near. I think the elder will say something like this. While the blood is running warm in your veins. And I'll add to it. While you got good sense. You're right. That is today. I don't know what tomorrow going to hold. Now we get up in the morning, be crazy as a road lizard. Don't know who you are. Don't know who you, what your name is. Where am I? Who am I? You might not know tomorrow, but you ought to do it today. I was, I was uh, pressing the point how uh, God's grace uh, is uncertain, and sometimes we don't know when it's going to end. Psalms 95 Verses 7 and 8. It says, listen, listen what, to this, what it says. It says, today if you hear his voice, harden not. You might be hearing his voice today, but on tomorrow, you might not be hearing it. So harden not your heart when you're hearing the Lord saying, come on in. Do better, straighten out, uh, repent. When you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. You might not be hearing it on tomorrow. We, we, we are now in a dispensation of grace. But we don't know how long it'll last before it runs out. For those of you who don't believe that grace can run out for individuals, I invite you to read with me Romans chapter 1. Turn to Romans chapter 1 and mark it. You can go back and read it more closer later up. And I don't know, it's one of the books I'm considering that we, we're going to study again. But Romans chapter 1, verses 21 through 22, verse 24, verse 28. Let me, let me read it and you, you tell me if you don't think that lets us know grace can run out. Uh, Romans chapter 1, 21 through 22, and verse 24, verse 28. Listen, and I'm, I'm reading it real careful. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts were darkened, professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. There are folk, uh, Chris, in 2022 who profess themselves to be wise, but I want you to know they're just fools. The word says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I don't care how wise you profess yourself to be. If you don't think there is a God, you don't recognize God is God, then you're foolish. They, they became fools. Listen to this. Wherefore, God also gave them up. Is that in your Bible? And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Does that sound like grace has run out? 
And does it sound like grace can run out? Yes, reprobate mind, Pastor. What does that mean? Reprobate mind. It means, according to Webster, to be rejected by God and with little hope of salvation. We live in a dispensation of grace. Grace is all around. Hey, mercy is all around us. Mercy endures forever. His grace is all around. We don't know when that dispensation of grace just might run out. My brothers and sisters, since we do not fully understand at what point God gives a person up, I dare to say that some of you listening to me, it might not be anybody in here, it might be. Some of you who are listening online, you're on the verge, you could be on the verge of being given up and rejected by God. I got a long road to hold, y'all. Y'all pray for me. It seems as though I can hear the Lord saying, I call you time after time. So then I can hear him saying, I've given you chance after chance. I've extended to you my outstretched arms. In fact, one scripture says, I've been stretching out my arms all day. For years, God has given us outstretched arms. Amen. He's given us and extended to us his mercy. Extended to us his grace. Seems like I can hear him saying, I, I extended to you the invitation. And then invitations after invitations. Had folks saying, is there another? Come on. Is there another one? Come on. I begged and I pleaded. And I seem like I can hear God says, I'm getting tired. And it, it, it will soon be too late. Somebody said too late are the Saddest words you can ever hear. Too late. What do you mean when they say too late? Too late means there'll be no more chances. No more opportunities. No more mercy. No more grace. No more gospel. No more hope. No more repentance. If that sounds stern, it is stern. I hope it will get our attention that while we're in this period of grace and while God is calling us now, our chance and our opportunity to come is now and today. Grace may run out. Amen. I guess I'll get another note on this, another phone call on this. That's all right. There's going to come a time when there won't be no more opening the doors of the church. Amen. Begging you to take advantage of this opportunity. Too late means it's all over. Too late means amen. Too late means the end. And we don't know when it will be too late for us. We don't know when it will be too late for this old world. I'm closing right now. One of these old days, God's going to dispatch an unnamed strong angel from heaven dressed in a cloud, a rainbow on his head. His face is going to be bright as the sun. His feet will be like pillars of fire. And God will tell that angel to put one foot on the land and one foot on the sea and declare by him who has been and forever will be that time has been but will be no more. When that declaration goes out, it's going to be too late. Too late. Too late. And when that will be, I don't know, but I, I know right now we have our chance. Right now we have our opportunity. Repentance is urgent. It's necessary. If you find something you need to repent of, you need to do it when? All right. I, I know y'all get tired. I, I, I heard this, and I <clears throat> heard it again last night when I got up this morning. I've been kind of humming it through the day. Oh, don't let it be said too late.
Don't let it be said too late. For tomorrow's sun may be shining on your grave. Don't let it be said too late. You don't let it be said too late. Don't you let it be said too late. For tomorrow's sun may be shining on your grave. Don't let it be said too late. You got it. Picked it up by the time I got through with it. <laughs> well, don't let it be said too late. Don't you let it be said too late. For tomorrow's sun may be shining on your grave. Don't let it be said too late. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Repentance is urgent and is necessary. If you find yourself needing to do it, you ought to do it today. I had you say this last Sunday. I'm going to end with this. Will you repeat after me? If there's something you should do. And if there's something you need to do. Do it today. If you ain't scared, tell somebody else. Look at somebody else this time. And tell them if there's something you should do. If there's something you need to do. Do it today. Amen. Amen. Will you bow with me for a moment? Thank you, Lord, for the word of wisdom. Thank you for this writer of Proverbs who has in a wise way lifted another thought for us today. And in our time of living, in our time of existing, help us to wrap our minds and our hearts around what Solomon has said. To know that we can't promise what's going to happen to us on tomorrow. To know that we ought to take advantage of what we can do today. And to know also that we are cursed if we cover our sins, but we're blessed if we confess and ask forgiveness of our sins. Wrap that around our hearts. Wrap it around our minds. Give us the urgency and necessity of getting straight with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. Will you stand with me? The hymn, The Day His Love Lifted Me. If you don't know the words, they're there in the bulletin. So open the bulletin and let's lift that today. And while we, while we lift it today, the door of the church is open. And we invite you to come. Now is your time. Now is your day. Now is your opportunity. Everybody located? Let's lift every voice and sing. And as we sing... The door is open. We invite you to come. Deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply sank within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry.
souls in danger, look above. Mr. Price and church family, we have Cameron Hearns, and he's coming for a candidate for baptism. Amen. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give God some praise. Amen. 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 Brother Cameron Hearn, good morning to you. Amen. What an awesome decision you have decided to make. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Do you mind? I want to ask, the Bible tells us that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that ye shall be saved. Amen. Has the Holy Spirit touched your heart to believe that? And have you prayed that prayer? Yes, sir. Amen. So we don't need to pray for you. The whole, you believe the Holy Spirit has touched you and you believe Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Yes, sir. Amen. Let's give God some praise. For the great things he has done. Amen. You want to be baptized. Yes, sir. You want to be saved. Yes, sir. Amen. He's saying, he's saying that with conviction. Yes, sir. I like that, brother. Cameron. All right. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm just asking you a few more questions. Is it all right? And then we're going to be through for today. All right? And we're going to pass Sykes going to baptize you next. All right? Amen. Amen. Will you promise to come to this church and allow Pastor Sykes to be your pastor? Yes, sir. Amen. Do you promise to come to this church to study the word of God and become a more mature Christian in your walk with the Lord? Yes, sir. Will you promise to allow these great brothers and sisters here to be your brothers and sisters in Christ? Yes, sir. And do you promise to bless this church with your time, your talent, and your treasure? Yes, sir. Amen. Brother Cameron, at this time I give you my right hand. But upon being baptized and receiving the virtual right hand of fellowship, you will have all rights, responsibilities, and privileges as every other member in this yeah. church. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. Let's give God some more praise. Amen. The candidate for baptism. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, I'm going to just tell you this before we, we finish up. After you're baptized, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. And understanding, when you need, when times get tough, remember the vow you gave to the God today. Not to us. The vow you made to God, what you promised. Amen? Yeah. Because life going to get tough. And Satan going to try to make you go away from God. Yeah. Remember the vow that you promised you will stay with him. And guess what he promised? He'll always stay with you. Amen. 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 Who do we have? Amen. From our new members committee this morning. Anyone? Uh, at this time, we're going to ask you to go out and uh, minister Annie's Price and the head cardinal of the church right there. 
Deacon Jefferson. Amen. Let's give God some more praise. Praise your name. Him. <laughs> Everybody say amen. Please give her your full attention. Good afternoon, Good everyone. Afternoon. The pastor, official board, and the New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church family solicit your prayers for our sick and shut-ins. Those names were called at the beginning of service. Amen. Call to prayer. New Jerusalem family, please connect with us in time of prayer each day at 12 noon. Pray with us wherever you are. Take a few minutes to go to God in prayer. Connect with us for prayer via phone teleconference each Wednesday at 12 noon and each Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. Please join us and don't be late. Start dialing in five minutes ahead of time. In order to join in, dial 667-9308529. The conference code is 1562351 pound. Please help us to keep New Jerusalem strong. Show your willingness to do your part by connecting with us in prayer. The prayers of the righteous avails much. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. We have three winners of the Optimist Club of Huntsville Annual uh, Sidewalk Chalk Art Contest. Age seven and under, second place was Aubrey Scott. She won $25. Third place, Ace Lynn Orr. She won $15. There were no entrants for age eight to 10. Age 11 to 13, third place winner was Mallory Roberts. She won $15. They, uh, there weren't any first place winners this year for the $35, new, uh, for the $35 award from New Jerusalem, but there's always next year. Thanks again to everyone who participated, Sister Sandra Griffin. Mm -hmm. We have two cards, grateful and blessed. Thank you so much, my church family, for the love, the prayers, the thoughtfulness you all have given. My surgery was successful. Praise God. Now I'm in therapy where I need more prayer. She says, smile. Love each and every one of you. Carol Vasquez. Mm -hmm. Thank you doesn't even begin to cover how grateful I am. Pastor Sykes and my New Jerusalem family, words can't express how thankful I am for all of you praying with me and for me during my surgery and recovery. Your texts, prayers, calls, cards, and support have been comfort for me. Thanks for being there for me. May God continue to bless and keep all of you. Um, but I am given, the card says, but I'm going to say it anyway. Thank you for real, for everything. You're the best. And that's from Cheryl Ford. Mm -hmm. uh, for our visitors' birthdays and uh, anniversaries, I did not receive any visitors' cards, but do we have any visitors worshiping with us today? No? Okay, well, it's great to be in the house of the Lord. We'd like to also welcome our virtual um, worshipers, if you're new 
to uh, worshiping with us online today. We'd like to thank you for joining with us, and we'd like mm -hmm. to also welcome you to our weekday worship services as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. For our birthdays, our birthday celebrants for December the 11th through the 17th, we have Sister Marina Burnett, December 11th, Brother Kevin Henson, December 11th, Sister Kennedy Jefferson, December 12th, Brother Tracy Holloway, December 13th, and Brother Jimmy Irves, December the 17th. Do we have any wedding anniversaries? Anyone celebrating a wedding anniversary? No? Well, happy birthday to our birthday celebrants. And again, welcome all of our members and our visitors, especially our virtual vis uh, visitors. Mm -hmm. Please go by our track rack presently located near the door to the east entrance to the church. There are gospel, inspirational, and devotional tracks and booklets for your personal devotional time mm -hmm. and to take and share with others. Please stop by today, the Evangelism Outreach Ministry. Additional announcements are placed on the bulletin board outside the pastor's study. Thank you and have a blessed day. Amen. Thank you, Sister Hughes. Don't forget as we pass out today, you can put your tithe and offering envelope in the basket on the table. That's where we give and have been since we've been in this pandemic. Uh, let me say a word about Christmas. Uh, Christmas is on Sunday, the fourth Sunday in this month. If the Lord is willing, we will have one worship service that's at 11 o'clock. That's the service that we usually stream. We'll stream it. It will be a combination of our Christmas program and our worship service on fourth Sunday, the 25th day of December. Make sure you come and, and you open up all your presents before you come and put them out the way. And come on, let's praise God for the present that he gave in Jesus Christ. That's on Christmas Sunday morning, if the Lord is willing. I'm not over Sunday school. Uh, will that be Sunday school, Miss Crutcher? Uh, <clears throat> no, it ain't my decision, but y'all hear what she said. Not unless you all want to. And you know ain't nobody going to want to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just say we'll just, we won't have Sunday school. We'll just have the one worship service since it's on Christmas Day. Okay. Is there anything else? Okay. Let's stand for our closing, after which Minister Cassandra Leslie will give us our prayer of benediction.
Heavenly Father, just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your divine word, God, yeah. that you send forth each Sunday. Continue to bless Pastor Sykes and strengthen him. Lead him, undergird him, and guide him, dear Lord God. And God, I just want to thank you for the young man, God, that came forth, God. Thank you for another soul in your precious kingdom, God. Now, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus as we all sing together. God bless you all.